Hi, and welcome back to Ignite Success, where we sit down with business leaders, business owners, business professionals, and talk about a lot of cool stuff that they're doing. And we also like to share their success story that can inspire and motivate you. I'm Sherry Clark, and I'm your host. And today I've got two wonderful guests with me, Sig McNary with Art of Peaceful Living. Hi, Sid. Hey. So great to have you back yeah, again. Yeah, I'm so excited to be yeah, here. Yeah, we got a little catching up to do. And Alfie Corona, so good to have good you to on the set. You. Yeah, so um, let's just start with you, Sid, okay. because we, we've done this before, and you have this Art of Peaceful Living, and you've written several books. Now, yes. two of them have not come out, but I found your story, if they missed the first one with us, to be really, you know, pretty uh, interesting in what you went through your journey to success, and just kind of share a little bit of that, and then... Tell us a little bit what you're going, what's going on now. Well, the beautiful thing about my journey has been I've been okay just being where I am, you know, and, and I've been that person that's always been called into what's next. So I've never really had to look at how was I going to leave coaching college football, step into being a yogi, travel the world and all those things because people kept asking me to step into the next thing, help this person do this or that. And it guided my life. And so I think it's, really been something of somewhat of a faith walk, you know, and, and learning how to be peaceful for myself created a business that is helping others find that way of art of peaceful living. Yeah, it does. It has to come in from within. You got to be good with yourself, right? Because it'll show on the outside. For sure. And people sure. pick up on that. Yeah. Alfie, I, it's, it's so good. You have a book there. And if you want to hold it up, you can. You are what you think. And um, reading, reading about you, I was really impressed because you are a U.S. Navy veteran, submarine yes. of all things. And so um, tell us a little bit about this and what brought you to write that book? Yeah, so uh, the U.S. Navy submarines provided me the opportunity that uh, I didn't have or I couldn't imagine that I was going to have afterwards. Uh, I'm coming from relatively nothing. Uh, to the U.S. from the Dominican Republic, later on becoming a U.S. citizen and struggling in New York City like many, many millions of immigrants coming to the U.S. Uh, I believed in this country since I was a kid. Nobody ever told me the U.S. this and that. I, didn't, I just had it in me, something about the, Amer the United States. And um, I felt a calling to serve. Uh, and it, it, it turns out that it was also a blessing to me, I pay the price to serve active duty for years. Then I did three years in the reserves, intelligence specialist. And uh, while I was there, made great relationships. Um, I turned out to be one of the top performers as a helm driver in the submarine, received Navy Marine Corps Achievement Medal. Uh, we got the highest score for supply management inspection uh, out of all the fleet in the US Navy at the time, and uh, received several awards and promotion at the time over there. A uh, great opportunity. Then uh, when I get out, I um, was able to finish several degrees. I have four, four college degrees at this point. Oh, my goodness. Four? One, yeah. One of them, uh, uh, a master's in cybersecurity from Fordham University and um, a master's in organizational leadership, a bachelor's in business, uh, uh, an associate's in business and, and accounting. And then um, so it was, uh, it was a way of me. I believed in education my whole life, uh, coming from a lot of instability in my childhood being passed down and all that. So I believe education was something that uh, somebody, the director of the school I was at the time, he always said, education is something no one can take away from you. So I saw it as an anchor for me personally. So I attacked that and was able to climb the corporate ladder. At this point, I'm a cybersecurity executive for a global company and uh, I'm a cybersecurity leader there. I wrote this book because I wanted to inspire other people that, uh, that come from nothing, regardless of their culture, their race, um, uh, or, or their language. And I wanted to, uh, the, the, in a nutshell, the idea is that um, in life, we attract how, what we identify ourselves with. So if we see ourselves as a victim, we're always going to be a victim. If we see ourselves as more than conquerors, like in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, 
uh, we are more than conquerors through Christ. And uh, I'm getting goosebumps right now. <laughs> so it, it, it's about how we see ourselves, really. And, and that's what God wants us to, to, to us to do, that we, we, we see ourselves how, how he's telling us we're more than conquerors. Even, even when we're suffering, even when we're going through bad times, because that's when we're tested. And then at the, end of the, at the end of that, we can continue moving forward when we pass the test. And the blessing is, is always after, after the night, the light shines brighter. Yeah, I mean, it is the test that makes us. And they say it's not the test, actually, but it's how you handle the test yes. that does it. And uh, I mean, immigrant served in this country's military. Thank you for your service. Thank that's you. wonderful. Thank you. And all those degrees. It's like, wow, that's like really awesomely <laughs> good. But, you know, both of you are are someone who, like, I think when I think of you two, I think perseverance, I think tenacity, I think drive. Like, you had the carrot in front of you, and you were going to get that carrot, and you both did. It was it didn't evade you for long, did it? Oh, you, yeah. you, you, both, you both pounced on it. And so I, I see that as something you guys have in common. Is that your hairdos as well? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's interesting that we're both sitting here in blue. We both talk about managing your mindset yeah. and getting all those things. And and yeah, we got the same barber. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I, I I think you two like we're sending emails last night or something. What are you wearing? What color? Right. I'm wearing black shoes. Anyway, <laughs> I think that that's a lot of fun. But yeah, so with what you guys gone through, you know. What is something, how would you define success, Sid? Success, I'd say, for me, has been, success ultimately looks like, where in my life am I having peace? Where am I in the flow? When there's resistance, no matter if it's, you know, far away from me, if I'm reaching for something further out, or if I'm reaching for something up close, having a great relationship with my wife, goes back to, do I have peace? Am I in flow with her? Do we move in sync? And that then that looks like the greater thing too. Am I in peace with my, my country? Are we moving in flow? How are we doing those things? That's what success looks like to me. So it's, it doesn't matter about the car necessarily or the house. If those things aren't bringing me to that space of peace and flow, then I'm not successful in my own life. And so when I look at it, it's like this is a successful moment for the three of us. Why? We're having a conversation. We're all engaged in it and it's peaceful and we're in the flow. So that's what success looks like for me. And which then leads to, I, I've been to the Dominican Republic and taken people there and we've had great uh, retreats and things in that nature. And I've got a surf coach in, in Las Terrenas and in, in the DR. And, and so all those things, my life has been built around, am I in the flow? Now I learned that through athletics. Isn't that interesting? Being in the flow in the zone as an athlete ultimately got me to the win. And I, I think it's about that for me. Win at everything. You know, win at being a great husband, win at being a great son, being a, a father, all those things. And we can all do that. Just win the moments in our life consistently, and then we'll have a successful life. There you go. There you go. That's how you ignite success. You know, you should write a marriage book. <laughs> you know, you well, talk about that. Well, it depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Alfie? How do you define success? I, I define success uh, taking ownership, taking ownership of our lives. I believe that um, in contrast to that, on the other hand, a lot of the things that happen to us human beings, uh, we, we, we are sometimes victims. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know, stuff happens, right? But... Um, then what, like you said earlier, what are we going to do about that then later on? So we need to take ownership if, if um, um, like they say, uh, if, uh, if life hands you lemonade, lemons, make lemonade. Yes. And that's for real. That's as real as it gets. And, uh, and make, make, but make the best, best damn lemonade you can make. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. not just squeeze it a little bit, squeeze it as hard as you can. Right? And. And, and do really the best that you can with those with those lemons. And that's that's uh, what I believe that we, we ought to do, take ownership and, and be a, a, and also have a, a great attitude. Because uh, a lot of times maybe we focus on the mechanics of things, taking action and, and OK, do this and, and 
and like the recipe following that. But what about our attitude? Right. Because we could be bitter for what, from what yes. happened to us. And that's that's something that we got to work on. And, and there's many ways to, to, do, to deal with that, whether that is uh, uh, prayer, uh, meditation, therapy, yoga, uh, working out, a combination of that, using a hobby, uh, get, associating with people that are better than us, that are where we want to mm -hmm. be. Uh, another thing that uh, uh, applies to that is who we associate with, it, with, with uh, mm -hmm. our circle. We are the five people we associate with. So success is also being selective of the people that we are with, that the closest, the five people. If we are always surrounded by people who are criticizing other people, uh, they're victims of uh, drugs or, or addicts of um, any other uh, you know, thing out there, uh, and um, financially in a bad place uh, for, for decades, uh, we need to check ourselves and, and um, uh, then be selective of, of those because we're gonna, we become those those five people. Birds of a feather flock together, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. It was so wonderful having you on here. If you want to know more about Sig McNary and Alfie Corona, go to IWantABuzz.com. And I'll catch you in the next segment of Ignite Success. With Storehouse Media Group, we are an award-winning publisher and we are everything books. We take an author who wants to write a book, whether it's with a concept and we help flush it out and develop it, or we will write the book for them, or we edit the book, or we publish the book, and we can market it to bestseller. All of the above, we just everything books. That's what Storehouse Media Group is.